Can you imagine being a student in the most famous grammar school in Britain? Eton was known as the top school, where only the sons of the wealthy parents could go. The greatest honour at Eton has always been cho- to be chosen to play for the cricket team. In cricket, each team member tries to hit the ball with his bat out of the reach of those in the field. That gives him time to run between the two sets of wickets. There are different ways in which he can be out. One way is if the bowler, the one who throws the ball, hits the wicket. He can also be out if the fielder catches the ball or throws to the wicket when the batsman hasn't completed his run. For a batsman to get over 50 runs is a high score. Only once in the history of the School of Eton, in 1877, were three brothers on the Eton cricket team at the same time. Their names are Kingston, George, Charles Studd. All three were very good cricketers. That year, the Eton cricket team beat their great rivals, Harrow. During their first innings of one match against Winchester, the oldest brother, Kingston, scored 52 runs. The second, George, scored 54 runs. And the youngest of the three, Charles, scored 53. You can imagine that it was a remarkable cricket match. The same year as the three boys were playing cricket for Eton, their father was invited by a friend to hear a preacher from America. The preacher's name was D. L. Moody. He told this gospel simply, You have put other things in place of God. You want to run your life your own way. God is holy and must punish sin. One day Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took the punishment for our sin on the cross. He died for us and rose again. You need to ask Christ to save you. Will you trust him today? Mr. Studd knew that Moody was telling the truth and he came back to hear him again. One evening during the meeting, he trusted Christ to save him from his sin. Right away, he began to tell others about the Lord Jesus and to invite them to his home to hear the gospel. He invited his three sons to go with him to hear Mr. Moody preach. But they did not feel that they needed the Lord Jesus Christ in their lives. Can you remember what it was like when you asked the Lord Jesus to save you? Some of you too have trusted Christ like Mr. Studd did. You too want to tell others the good news. I'm sure you have found out that some want to hear and others don't want to listen. That shouldn't stop us from telling people about the Saviour. It wasn't easy for Mr. Studd either. A year passed. The boys were home for the summer holidays. Each weekend their father had someone staying in the house who spoke at the meetings on Sunday. One Saturday morning, the boys planned a trick on the man who had come to preach. They asked Mr Weatherby to go horse riding with him and their father, for they had discovered that he couldn't ride very well. The three boys rode in their horses behind the father and the preacher. Suddenly they rode past the other two as fast they could. This meant that it was very difficult for their father and the preacher to hold their horses back. Somehow the preacher managed to hang on as his horse strained forward. The boys repeated their tricks several times and their father couldn't say anything because he himself wanted so much to laugh. It wasn't very nice of the boys to make fun of the man who had come to teach the Bible. Have you ever done anything like that? Perhaps you talked to your friends during a Bible lesson or laughed about it afterwards. It is wrong to make fun of those who are telling us the gospel. They want to help us and this is the most important message we can ever hear about how to be saved from sin. The preacher was not put off by the boy's tricks. He spoke to all three of them individually about the Lord Jesus Christ that afternoon. As Charles was going out to play cricket, the man caught him on a words and asked, Are you a Christian? Charles answered, I know what you call a Christian. I have believed in Jesus Christ since I was knee high, of course. And, of course, I believe in church too. The preacher answered, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's John 3.16. Do you believe Jesus Christ died for you? Yes. Do you believe the other half of that verse? That those who believe in Christ shall have everlasting life? 
No, said Charles. I don't believe that. The preacher said, Either God or you is not speaking the truth. Do you think that God is a liar? No, said Charles. Will you always hold back from doing what is right, believing one half of the verse and not the other half? I suppose not always, says Charles, but he realised he needed to face the questions there and then. The preacher said, Eternal life is a gift. When someone gives you a present at Christmas, what do you do? You say, thank you. Will you say thank you to God for his gift? Charles Studd got down on his knees and said, Thank you to God. He asked the Lord to save him from his sin, and right away joy and peace came into his heart. He knew that he had new life from God, eternal life. It was only a few days later that his brothers discovered something. The man had talked to all three of them separately that afternoon, and each of them had prayed to ask Christ to save them. That was the most important day in the lives of all three of them. Charles liked cricket a lot. He could bowl and bat very well. He spent hours practising his batting in front of a tall mirror in his bedroom. He would not smoke in case the smoke would affect his eyesight. After his older brothers had left the school, he became captain of the cricket team at Eton. When he went to study at Cambridge University, he was chosen for their cricket team and soon became their best player and captain. In fact, in 1882, he was named the finest cricketer in England. The following year, he was a member of the English national team, which went to Australia and won the series of matches. Through playing cricket, Charles learned about courage, patience and teamwork. However, even though he was a true Christian, he allowed cricket to take too great a play place in his life. He spent a lot of time for this game and did not have much time for God. Are there things that seem more important to you than living for the Lord Jesus Christ? If you are a Christian, the Lord Jesus Christ should come first in your life. Pleasing him and doing what the Bible says is more important than anything else. For six years while he was a student, Charles did not tell others about the Lord Jesus as he should. He knew the gospel, but he did not have the courage to share it. There were people praying for him that he would have a new love for Christ. Towards the end of his time at Cambridge University, the Lord used the serious illness of his brother George to show him that the most important thing in life is doing what God wants. George almost died. His trust in the Lord was strong. Charles realised then that the only thing that really matters when you face death is to have Jesus Christ ruling in your life as Lord of all. He said, It doesn't matter how famous cricketer I am, or how rich, or how popular. Knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour and serving him is far, far greater. His brother George finally got well again, and Charles went back to hear the preacher, Mr Moody, who is holding meetings in London. As Moody spoke, Charles realised, I have not been living for the Lord as I should. I've been putting cricket before my work for the Lord. Charles asked the Lord to forgive him and to take full control of his life. He let the Lord have the first place. Right away he began telling his friends about the Lord Jesus Christ. Before long, he saw the first one come to Christ. He said, the joy I had of seeing my friends saved was greater than any joy I have ever had in playing cricket. He still played, but now he wanted above all to tell others the good news of Jesus Christ. Charles Dudd had to learn another very important lesson, that he could not serve the Lord in his own strength. He had to learn to depend completely on the Lord to work through him. He could not count on his own abilities or even the advice and help of others. There were things he thought he could do on his own without asking the Lord to guide him and help him. For example, he had courses to study at university. Did he need the Lord's wisdom and strength for that? Then he realised the great truth. You are not your own, for you have been bought with a price. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 In his room one evening he got down on his knees and yielded every part of his life to the Lord. He used the words of a hymn as a prayer. 
Take my life and let it be. Consecrate it, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. That night he saw that he needed to trust in the Lord, like a little boy who trusts his daddy to bring him somewhere he had never been before. He was to live his whole life simply trusting in the Lord. He knew that the Lord was more than able to keep him. If he gave everything over to him, so he trusted God to do his will in and through his life. The Lord Jesus gave him wonderful peace and joy as he gave over every part of his life to him. If you are a Christian, are you willing to say, Dear Lord, all I am, all I have, all I ever hope to be, I now am forever dedicated to you for your use and glory. And please, Lord, hold me to it. Amen. Remember, if we are going to serve the Lord, then it must be in his strength. He wants us to give ourselves completely over to him, trusting in him alone.